Let's talk right. about Texas. Texas. Okay. And we're going to talk about Texas. 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 We've said the word Texas enough. <laughs> little buddy i am daddy what is this series called the game plan we today are having a third episode about dallas fort worth we're gonna go see the brewers play the texas rangers at some point among our baseball travels we've been to 12 major league stadiums of the 30 to see the milwaukee brewers play this is one that we haven't been to yet which is why we are game planning our future travels during this pandemic when we can finally go see live baseball in action again. <laughs> There's a chance that the Brewers may play in Texas in 2022. Mm -hmm. We've given you our picks for top five things to do and... Restaurants. We have some local expertise coming to us. Yes. For what to do and what to check out. This guest appearance comes from a good friend of ours from the broadcast world, from my old world at WTMJ. She is with TMJ4 News. She's a sports anchor. She is a sports reporter there, and she comes from Dallas-Fort Worth. Who is she? Delaney Bry. Hey Sorgies, it's Delaney. Thank you so much for having me on your channel, and I am so excited to tell you the five things to do and five places you have to eat while you're visiting my home state of Texas and of course my hometown of Dallas. So let's get started. First, the top five things you need to do, of course, is go to the ballpark, which you will be doing, hopefully. Hopefully you can catch the Brewers and the Rangers playing. They're decent, they're, they're not the crew, but hey, they're my first love, so I hope you enjoy them as much as I did growing up. Now, of course, you'll be enjoying Globe Life Field. That's the brand new stadium that the Rangers just built with the roof and everything, so don't worry, you won't even get hot. Doesn't matter what temperature it is, when you visit Texas, you're gonna be fine. Right across the street, though, though is still Globe Life Park, or as true Texans know it, the ballpark in Arlington. That's where I grew up watching baseball games, and I love it. It's, it's old school in the fact that it is a brick ballpark. You got plastic seats. You even got some bleachers still in there around the outfield and the batter's eyes. So hey, that's the ballpark I grew up in and where I fell in love with baseball. So if you get a chance, uh, go over there and take a tour still. It's still pretty cool. And of course, um, there's so much history and so many crazy things that happen there. My favorite memory from that ballpark is uh, where I got to buy tickets for me and my dad and my mom. I spent a whole week's paycheck on them, but it was a Sunday, we drove up, and we got to watch Adrian Beltre hit his 3,000th hit in that ballpark. So that was really, really, really cool. Um, that's my favorite memory from that, of course. So the second thing you need to do while you are in Texas, you also gotta go to downtown Dallas and you gotta check out Pioneer Plaza. We have these huge bronze longhorns and they're stationed to where they look like like they're in a stampede and they are just so cool. It's actually kind of funny how many people who grow up in the Dallas area don't know that they exist, um, but they are there. It's called Pioneer Plaza. If you put it in your Google Maps, it'll take you right to them. And it's and it's also right across the Omni, so uh, in the convention center. So people will be able to tell you where it is, but it's a great photo op. You can go there, learn a little bit about history too. Um, it, it is a site, I believe Civil War site, uh, as well, so go check out the bronze longhorns. There, you can climb on them, you can take pictures, you can do all that. It's they're really, really cool, and it's definitely something that pe when people pass them, you gotta stop and just take them in for a second. So the third thing you need to do while you are in Texas is you need to go to a Western store. Now you can go to whatever Western store. You can go to Cavenders. That's more like a a, a target of sorts of Western stores. But there's this place called Wild Bill's Western Store, and uh, they not only have anything to meet all of your cowboy needs and dreams, but they also custom fit cowboy hats. So if you're in there, chances are you'll be able to see somebody have a cowboy hat fitted to their head, and so they'll stretch it and they'll steam it, and they'll, it's a really cool thing to see in person. And of course, who doesn't love just going a little window shopping for a new pair of boots? So the fourth thing you need to do is something that I think is so cool and so special about Wisconsin and Texas. 
So growing up in Texas, I used to go to the Dallas Farmer's Market with my mom and you know, we would get produce, get groceries, stuff like that. Every now and then there would be a little taco stand or something like that where you could get something to eat. But they, I mean, it is, they built onto it. It is so beautiful and it's huge and it's just a really cool place. Of course, food trucks are all around. So if you have a chance to go to the farmer's market in Dallas, uh, I, I just think that's a great place. The fifth and final thing you need to do while you're in Texas. Now, nobody likes to be stuck inside especially after everything that we've experienced. However, if you do go to Texas and you do want to be inside because it is extremely hot outside, if it's one of those triple digit type of days, Dallas has any museum you could ask for. We have an art museum. We have the Perot, the science museum. We have uh, the Dallas Zoo, the aquarium. Yes, the zoo has indoor spaces <laughs> as well. Uh, that's something really cool about Dallas is we've got everything as far as not only educational and learning um, but also places with AC that you can go and you can have a great time and enjoy. Uh, I don't know if kids these days know what IMAX theaters still are, but <laughs> at the Aquarium and the Perot, they have IMAX movies um, that you can go and watch or they're pretty cool. Now on to my favorite part, my top five places to eat while you are in Texas. This may get me a little bit emotional because I love food and I love Texas food and I miss it very much. So we're gonna try to get through this without any tears if we can, <laughs> but number one, you gotta go to Whataburger. No questions asked, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whenever you go, whatever you order, it's gonna be delicious, you're gonna love it, and I guarantee you, when you go back to the Midwest and you try Culver's, it's not gonna be the same. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, the shots have been fired, but Whataburger is what Culver's is to Wisconsin, Whataburger is to Texas, but as a Texan, I'm always gonna say Whataburger is truly better because not only do you have burgers, which you can get on Texas toast, by the way, but you also have chicken, and Whataburger is home to the OG honey bugger, honey bugger, honey butter chicken biscuit. <laughs> and it's the, it's the OG, is where the honey butter chicken biscuit started, was at Whataburger, and it's delicious. You can either, even order um, honey butter as a side and they'll give it to you in a container. So whatever you get, you can dip into the honey butter and it's delicious. They've also got breakfast taquitos. So honestly, whatever you eat at Whataburger, you're gonna enjoy it. I promise you're gonna miss it. Also, get yourself a Dr. Pepper. Get yourself a good old Dr. Pepper while you're down there too. Uh, number two is something that I miss because I've noticed that we don't have them in Wisconsin. Yes, we have donut stores, but what you'll notice about donut stores in Texas, they have these things called kolaches. Think pig in a blanket, but better. That's what kolaches are. Uh, if you walk in there and they don't have kolaches, walk out and go to another one. I prefer Shipley's Donuts. That's a place that I grew up eating, of course. There was a Shipley's right across the street from my school, so we would always go to Shipley's before my mom dropped me off. And uh, that was the best. You can order a kolache, you can order donuts. Um, you're gonna notice that the donuts are a little bit different in the South. Uh, a little more airier, softer, sweeter, most likely unhealthier, but <laughs> they're good, they're delicious. Third place you have to eat. If you're a chicken guy or if you're just a home style, you know, bring me the big platters of the sides and everything and share it around a family dinner. A good old Southern family meal, you gotta go to Babe's. Babe's Chicken Dinners, where it is at. Fried chicken, chicken fried steak, taters, mashed potatoes, French taters, uh, lima beans, rolls, oh, it's, it is the best. And, and honestly, you can order, it's serve family style. So, you know, just order the family meal and, and everybody will get fed. You may end up fighting over the last lima bean, but you know, that's just character building in Texas. So I hope you guys get a chance to go to Babes. Another place 
again, trying to think of what we enjoy here in Wisconsin and giving you the Texas equivalent. Fish fries. Fish fries really don't happen in Texas. Uh, they're definitely not like they happen here in Milwaukee. If we fry a fish, it is most likely catfish. Uh, so you can go to Sam's Catfish. This place has been around forever. It does not look like a place you would want to go eat from the outside. In fact, thinking about how the world is right now with COVID, it probably looks abandoned. But <laughs> Sam's Catfish is a staple. It is a sanctuary for catfish fries. And if you go there, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. But in Texas, it's the old catfish fry. We're gonna fry up some catfish. And so that's the equivalent of a fish fry here in the Midwest, which I have grown to be a, a fan of. I love my fish fry Fridays. Well, I'm really gonna give you six, I guess. Instead of a top five, I'm gonna give you a top six because it's, it's really hard <laughs> to do a top five in Texas. Uh, but barbecue, of course, you have to get now. If you've got to get barbecue fast, you should be able to find a Rudy's barbecue. Uh, it started in Waco. It has become more of a franchise now, but they keep doing things the way that the original one in, in Waco started. You go up, you order again, they give it to you on a, on a platter, kind of fa family style, or you can do it by a meal if you get a sandwich or something like that. If you're willing to put the time and the effort into getting the very best barbecue that you can while you are in Texas, then my friends, look no farther than Meshack's and Garland, Texas. Meshack's is the best barbecue I have had that has not been made by a man with the last name Bry. Meshack's is literally a shack. A little red shack with a couple of smokers and if you're able to, like I said, put in the time, get there at 5 a.m. in the morning and wait in line for your taste of Meshack's barbecue and some peach cobbler, then my friend, it is all worth it. And that is the pinnacle of barbecue in Texas, in my opinion. My sixth, my bonus place to eat, of course, I alluded to it a little bit earlier with the taquitos, but Tex-Mex. Uh, Tex-Mex is so much different than authentic Mexican. Uh, a lot more flavors, spices, um, things like that. Authentic Mexican is surprisingly bland to some people. I think it's delicious, um, but it's surprisingly bland to people. So get you some good old Tex-Mex. Get the lengua. That's my personal favorite. Lengua tacos, lengua meats, I think is a, a very, Special Tex-Mex meat. You can honestly go get Tex-Mex anywhere. You can go to an El Phoenix and get good Tex-Mex. Uh, even the franchise places, the places where you'll see, I mean, you'll see Chewy's, you'll see El Phoenix. Uh, don't go to On the Border. If you wanna go and check out my hometown of Mesquite, Texas, Tino's is the same family that has been feeding me since 1993. So Tino's Mexican restaurant in Mesquite, Texas, uh, that's, that's where I've been growing up eating from three different locations. It moved three different times while I was growing up <laughs> there and we followed it everywhere it went. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'm getting sentimental now thinking about, uh, my hometown and my home state. I love it. I hope you guys love it just as much as I do. I hope you fall in love with it. I hope you fall in love with the people. Uh, Southern hospitality, saying yes ma'am, no ma'am, having a little twang in everything that you say. Uh, hey, I, I dig it. I hope you guys dig it. And I hope that maybe if we are doing this trip in the future where things are normal, give me a ring and maybe I can take a couple of weeks off and come join you. I mean, hey, I, I know a spot, a place we can sleep on the couch for free if you need to. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy it and good luck on all your adventures so far and going forward into this new year of 2021. Love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic time and I hope that one day soon we won't be doing this. We'll be having a face-to-face -face conversation. And like I said, maybe we'll be sharing some lengua tacos or some water burger uh, on, at the table together. So looking forward to it again. Have fun, enjoy, and we'll see you soon.
You can see somewhere on the scoreboard who won this competition. Him, me. Yep, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Next episode, where are we going to check out? Where are we sending our fans to go look at as we preview? It is... Tampa Bay, or as so, some of you might call it, Tampa Bay. <laughs> the home of the Rays, the American League champions entering this upcoming Major League Baseball season. Chance we could be there in 2023 yep. to see our Brewers play. Now, to check out all our game plan episodes, to check out everything we do on Sorgi Stories, get a like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. Ding, ding, ding! ding. For little buddy, I am daddy. Can you take us out, little buddy? So long from Sorgi Story Studios here in Milwaukee. The best Bob Uecker impersonation around. At least from an 11-year-old.